to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart. Today is September 22nd, 2020. Today I'd like to share a few thoughts and ideas around flipped learning, share a, a lesson or even a unit that, uh, that I'm planning on where I'm going to try to attempt to implement some aspect of a flipped if you're interested in the show notes for today's broadcast, feel free to search Open Flip Summer 2020 at benjaminlstewart.org. If you're interested in finding out more information about this CMOOC, I recommend that you visit the website at theopenflip.com forward slash summer 2020 website. Open Flip Summer, it's a connected course about flipped learning. And it has uh, several different units, up to, I think, five or six different units uh, for the course. And um, a shout out to Ken Bauer and his team for setting this up. It's both in Spanish and English. So again, I recommend that you check it out. So week five, I believe this is the last week. And uh, the idea is to share an experience with uh, flipping a lesson or a unit. And uh, what I want to share with you today are the current technologies that I'm currently using for a class that I'm teaching this semester and uh, what I've done thus far and what I'm planning to do going forward as it relates to flipped learning. I am currently using Microsoft Teams at our university. We're fortunate enough to have an account with Microsoft 365. So all of our students have a, an account with Microsoft as well as uh, the uh, instructors. And we're using this semester Microsoft Teams, and I'm also using a lot Flipgrid, which integrates nicely into Microsoft Teams uh, as it's bought out, as it was bought out by uh, Microsoft. And so here I've integrated Flipgrid here, a space within Microsoft Teams where students can access the different activities that we will be uh, doing this semester. So one of the uh, ways in which I'm using Flipgrid is I'll oftentimes post a video let me show you a past topic or an activity that we've done here to illustrate. So in this case, you see that I have uploaded a video that um, comes with just a few instructions off to the left. Most of the instructions are actually included in the video. So this class that I'm teaching, listening and speaking this fall 2020 semester, it really is to try to help students get some practice in uh, listening comprehension and conversational uh, speech. And so in this case, uh, students are asked to watch the video, follow the instructions. I'm also modeling what I'm asking them to do as I'm doing the same thing in the video. And then based on what they understand from the video, then they're asked to uh, respond, creating their own video as a response. If you're familiar with Flipgrid, that is uh, basically how it works, uh, students are able to respond or comment on other videos by uploading their own videos. So here we have different responses and in this particular case I introduced this activity in a live class session and basically gave them very little instructions, again asked them to watch the video and respond and I remained online for any questions or issues that they, that they have. Students that are taking my class this semester, listening and speaking one, are at an A1 to A2 English proficiency level, which is a basic level. And so I find myself, uh, when I think about flipped learning, gradually implementing uh, the idea of accessing content outside of class or accessing new content even sometimes in class with the idea again that I'm there to help them uh, if they have any issues. A lot of times students will be faced with challenges with technology so a lot of times if I ask them to complete an assignment I like to be online at the time of assigning uh, the task so that if they do have any issues or questions I can assist. This is, I think, more relevant at the beginning of the semester. We've just now completed four weeks. So at this point, students have a little bit of practice uploading videos. And for the most part, students have figured out the, the technology involved in completing these similar tasks. So as they become familiar with the technology and, and 
Uh, they gain more confidence in speaking and their uh, list with their listening comprehension. I find that I can implement more uh, these uh, different aspects of flipped learning. And now, as we are into the fifth semester or fifth week of the semester, that in the future I'll be able to use similar activities using Flipgrid where I can. Uh, assign a similar task before we do a particular activity where again they can access the video listen to the instructions from the video and then respond I also find it useful to use kind of a flipped learning environment concurrently with other activities that I'm doing uh, face to face or in line I online I should say with my with my students uh, I'll give you an example this week Students are asked to complete a, uh, a performance task. And let me open up here to show you. And if I go to the schedule view, I think this is the easiest way to kind of visualize what I'm talking about. So here we have different activities that are going on concurrently. We have a unit one performance task, even though this is uh, scratched out here you see that we have another one up here along the top this performance task is due on Friday and students are asked to create a video uh, working in teams uh, that relate to COVID uh, they're asked to take on a role to provide a kind of a problem and a solution video to current challenges that people face during uh, COVID and so Students are working on a performance test this week along with different activities that are uh, still related to family and friends. Uh, the performance test that they're completing this week, they're asked to reflect on current relationships that they have with their friends and family to draw on those experiences when they discuss their challenges and the problems and solutions that they're going to include in their own video. So the general topic is family and friends. And along with that, over this, along with this performance task, students are also being asked to complete uh, different activities within Flipgrid that also relate to friendship and family, but they basically complement each other. So here is an example where maybe I ask students to uh, check out a video and respond in Flipgrid on a topic that very much relates to an overarching task, a performance test that they're also completing at the same time with their teammates. And so I find that uh, flipped learning isn't always about using content or accessing content as input before a dynamic class, but it could also be during the class it could also be in conjunction with other activities that are going on in the class and when when we look at just the use of video which i think at, at the root this is what we're talking about when we're discussing aspects of flipped learning is really what's the best way to use video in class before class after class but i've talked in prior videos and prior uh episodes of uh, this podcast different examples of using audio and video even after the class where maybe students are struggling and i've have found a, a need to create a video or tutorial to help certain students that i might even make available a, a video or an audio after a class or after the fact in order for them to go back and review a particular strategy or maybe it's to clarify certain issues or problems that they were having with technology. Certainly they can access all of our online live classes because they're uh, all recorded, right? So it's another use, another way to use video, I think to help English language learners, especially when they're at a basic level, they miss something in class to have that information available to them. So I think at the root of a flipped learning experience. It's really about understanding the use of video and audio and thinking in terms of, well, is that content serving as input? Is it really providing input to the learners? Is it being used to create output? 
if, te- if uh, students are creating uh, content for the use of a, of a particular class, are they just using that content to complement other forms of content that are being kind of integrated uh, throughout the educative experience for a particular class? So just a lot of different uh, ways of looking at it. Today, I just wanted to share with you just a very simple way using Flipgrid, using this video component and having them respond, and then just deciding on at what point is a good um, way of implementing this task, whether it happens before a class, whether it happens during a class, and of course, it could also happen after the class. But really looking at each day, each lesson, and the sequence of lessons over time to find the best way of including video, including audio in uh, to the, the class. And, and again, I'm using video and audio a lot for, for my purposes simply because I'm, uh, I'm teaching a listening and speaking class. But of course, this extends to any type of document, uh, text, um, any type of work that uh, would you know, uh, be considered content for a particular class. I think it's also important to uh, mention the uh, the need for open educational resources and and uh, really the value in sharing and and creating content that's under a Creative Commons license, just so that educators and students have a wider variety of content to choose from when it comes to. Uh, working with the content, creating the content, maybe remixing and uh, publishing certain content for a particular class. I think it's all related and uh, probably is a, a topic for a different or separate video. I'm curious what you think. If you have any input or suggestions or feedback for me in any way related to my context, I'm interested in hearing how others are flipping their classroom. Uh, given the the type of class it is, given the the preferences that you have as an instructor, as well as the particular group or the group profile that you have, I think there are a lot of factors that go into making decisions about the degree in which one flips a class. And uh, I think it's very important uh, to be able to share these experiences with others and uh, hear how others are adapting their teaching practice uh, to a flipped learning approach. This has been In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.